Now that we know how to factorise linear equations and linear expressions, we can move on to look at quadratic equations and quadratic expressions. Now the process that we're going to follow is exactly the same. We're first going to look at the inverse of factorising or the reverse of factorising, which is multiplying out brackets, just to help you to understand how these things work. And then we'll move on and we'll look at how we actually factorise quadratic expressions. So if we start with a quadratic, and by a quadratic, we mean anything that contains an x squared. So in a linear equation, we only had x's, y's and z's. In a quadratic equation, we might have x squareds, we might have y squareds, and we might have z squareds. That's the big difference between a linear and a quadratic equation. So if we take something of the form x plus 3 times x plus 2. Now when we multiply out the brackets with this type of question, we notice that we've got two expressions in each bracket. And what we need to do is we need to multiply every expression in each bracket with every expression in the other bracket. So what I mean is, if we take x in the left hand bracket here, we need to multiply that x by the x in the other bracket, and we need to multiply it by the 2 in the other bracket. We would then need to do the same for the 3 in the left hand bracket. We would need to multiply it by the x in the right hand bracket and the 2 in the right hand bracket. So let's do that now. The first step is we're going to multiply x by x. Well x times x is x squared. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply that x by the other term in the second bracket. So this time we've got x times 2. Well, x times 2 is 2x. So we've multiplied both terms in the second set of brackets by the x in the first bracket. But what we haven't yet done is we haven't looked at this 3 here in the first bracket. We now need to multiply that by the two expressions in the other bracket. So now we've got 3 times x. Well, 3 times x is just 3x. And now we're just left with one more multiplication to do, and that's multiplying the 3 in the first bracket by the 2 in the second bracket. Well, 3 times 2 is just 6. Now, in the previous video, we looked at how to collect like terms. And what we notice here is that we've got two terms with x included. So all we're going to do, just to finish this off and to simplify it as far as possible, is we're going to combine the two terms involving x. So we'll have x squared. We've got plus 2x plus 3x. Or well, 2 plus 3 is 5. So we'll get plus 5x. And not to forget the plus 6 on the end. We'll do another one of these. So this time I'm going to do 2x plus 3 times x plus 4. Okay, so the process is exactly the same. First of all, I'm going to take the first term in the first bracket, which is 2x, and I'm going to multiply it by both terms in the second bracket, which is x and 4. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. Remember we're multiplying the coefficients, the 2 and the 4 together. So 2 times 4 is 8x. Now I've multiplied both of the terms in the second bracket by the first term in the first bracket. I'm now going to move on to the second term in the first bracket and multiply it by the x and then multiply it by the 4 in the second bracket. So 3 times x is just 3x. And 3 times 4 is just 12. Now we're going to finish this in exactly the same way as we did the last example. We're going to collect like terms because we see here we've got two terms involving x. So, terms involving x squared are unaffected. 8x plus 3x is 11x. And terms that don't involve x are unaffected. 
when we've multiplied out the brackets, we're left with 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. We can also do this when we have expressions of the form x plus 3, x minus 4. And the process is exactly the same. We're going to take the x in the first bracket and multiply it by the terms in the second bracket. So x times x is x squared. x times minus 4 is minus 4x. And then we move on to the second term in the first bracket. And we multiply it by the x and the minus 4. Well, 3 times x is plus 3x. And plus 3 times minus 4, a plus times a minus is a minus, gives us minus 12. But we're not quite finished because we need to collect like terms. x squared minus 4x plus 3x, or minus 4 plus 3 leaves us minus 1, or minus x. Minus x and minus 1x are the same thing, and minus 12. Okay, so we're just going to do one more of these, and this time we're going to do one of the form 3x minus 2 times 2x minus 1. Okay, so everything is exactly the same. The process is exactly the same. We're going to take the 3x and we're going to multiply it by the two terms in the second bracket. Well, 3x times 2x. Now, when we multiply a 3x and 2x, the coefficients at the front of the numbers get multiplied. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Next, we're going to multiply the 3x and the minus 1 together. Well, 3x times minus 1 is minus 3x. Anything times minus 1 becomes the negative. Now we need to multiply the minus 2 by the two terms in the second bracket. Minus 2 times 2x. Well, minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. So minus 2 times 2x is minus 4x. And just take care here because we've got a minus times a minus. Well, a minus times a minus is a plus. Minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. The last step is to collect like terms. So 6x squared. We've got two terms in, involving x. We've got minus 3x and we've got minus 4x. Well, minus 3x minus another 4x is minus 7x. And we've got plus 2.